AI for technical research, really? Really? Seems like a bad idea. Hmm. But here's the thing, gang, bring, bring it in. I don't want answers from AI. I don't want answers. What I want is AI to bring me all the authoritative info I need to make my own decision in as efficient a manner as possible. Us professionals can't just trust this mystery box, and it isn't a matter of AI not being smart enough yet. Take ChatGPT. It will never be of a level of smartness to where it is authoritative. I will never be able to point my finger to an AI in an audit and say, Well, that's what the AI said. AI will get better and it'll get more helpful for us, but accountability, it's ours to keep. And that's why the best way to get AI to research for you is to show it how to research like a human. That's right, like a real boy. Four rules to follow, a killer prompt you can swipe, and a bonus at the end that'll save you a pile of time all aboard the tease train. Okay, number one, go straight to the source. All language models today have inherent knowledge from their training data, but this isn't what we'll use for research. A language model is not a brain. It is the thing that make word from book. It just make word and no be brain. And the way you give it brain is a concept called RAG or retrieval augmented generation. Here's an example of RAG in action in Bing chat. I wanna know how to make ice cream. And it uses Bing's web search to find the best articles. It scrapes information off of those pages and uses that to generate the answer. This is the longest explanation for ice cream. Oh my gosh. Wrap it up, talk amongst yourselves. Okay, you see the pages that it scraped down at the bottom here. Now, under the hood, Microsoft uses GPT-4, OpenAI's latest language model. But what is going into the model, the stuff that you send to the model to get a response back, is actually something like this. Here is a user question. Answer it with the following context. Stuff scraped from site one, stuff scraped from site two, etc. So the answer it's returning is referencing the info from the website, not its general knowledge. And this is an incredibly important distinction. GPT-4 was the first large language model we had that will reliably stick to that context. Context, good, and not rely on its general knowledge. General knowledge, bad. Now, normies use Google, but professionals, they use research tools with authoritative sources, except for when they use Google. And it's what separates a big brain pro from an Investopedia poser. Now, most of the time when I'm doing research, I already know what my source ought to be, or at the very least, the governing body or regulatory authority that I wanna get the answer from. So the best thing you can do when researching with a language model is define exactly what that source should be. Let's say it's a huge document like an IRS publication. Give it the source. Tell it to use that source when it answers the question. Now, when you already have your source material, your best bet right now is to use one of two things. Either GPT-4 and specifically their WebPilot plugin. They used to have built-in browsing. They've, they've killed that for like the last two months, but honestly, WebPilot's better than their built-in browsing was. I've got this article from Martha Stewart about making ice cream, and it's an absolute banger. So this is the source material for my research project. And all I gotta do here is I gotta point WebPilot to that article. So I'm gonna say how I can make ice cream and put the URL in. We see here, it's just using that article. The other way is to use a still relatively new model, Claude 2 by a company called Anthropic. I'll put links to all these things in the show notes. This isn't a podcast, in the video description. You say, talk to Claude. And with this model, you can attach anything you want to the discussion. So if you got an IRS publication, a piece of legislation, you can attach it here. The great thing about this model, it handles up to 150 pages of source information, as opposed to ChatGPT where you're limited to like six or so right now. Now this is an example of RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, telling the model to use authoritative source material to answer the question, or even better than answering the question, just ask for excerpts, quotations from the source material. Because what I need is ultimately to be convinced of the answer. I need to see exactly what was pulled from the source material to get to that answer. And this is where instructing it to research just like a human meat bag would becomes really helpful for me. So rather than asking it to answer the question, I'm gonna ask it to provide verbatim quotations from the source material. In fact, I'll go one step further. I'll ask it to list out the excerpts most relevant to my question, other quotations that are slightly related, and last, quotations around any exceptions to the rule. Now, these are all exact word-for-word -word quotations from the source material. You can even go a step further and ask it to provide citations in a specific format, like the page of the PDF, or what section and subsection these quotes were under. Now, this is what we do as humans when we are doing research. We have to go through all these materials and find the most relevant bits to come to our own answer. This just saved me a pile of time. I got one more tip for you, but stick around to the end. I want to share a mega 
mega time saver, particularly for those of you in accounting firms. Okay, last tip here, number four, chunk it. Every time I talk about research online, you get that one guy that's like, <laughs> Ask it how rodeo earnings are taxed in Nova Scotia. If you are a member of the Ministry of Magic for five months and 30 days. This isn't how we research people. You gotta chunk out each of those technical considerations individually, I don't know, just like we do when we normally research. It's a great example of our, of our own insecurities getting in the way of actually learning how to put a tool to use. Now baked into that question are a number of different questions, right? How are rodeo earnings taxed in Nova Scotia? How are Ministry of Magic members taxed? How long do you need to be in the ministry to receive special tax treatment? Why are the forces of evil going after children? Surely there are more powerful wizards out there than these children. And why do people keep sending their kids to this school? Now AI can actually handle some of this, like inferring the questions within the question, but I still think it's kind of lazy and reduces the likelihood that you get a good answer. Okay, so I teased one mega time saving tip, but first, gang, I'm giving an AI talk at a conference. That's right, ad read time. This video is sponsored by Financial Sense, who is putting on WorkflowCon, a virtual conference next month. It is absolutely free, bless their little hearts. There's gonna be a whole bunch of super talented speakers there. It, again, doesn't cost anything. You'll learn how to better manage and improve your workflow. Connect with forward-thinking firm owners like yourself and hear from speakers who know what they're talking about. Mm. A lot of cool people, Don Brolin, Eric Green, fellow internet think boy Ryan Lozanis, Kelly Parks, now Carter Gray, YouTube celebrity Veronica Wasik. It's gonna be good, not gonna wanna miss it. It's been put together by the folks at Financial Sense. No need to be a Financial Sense user, anybody can join, but if you've been following my channel, you know they are one of the 17 core apps I think you need to choose from when you're picking the app that's gonna be at the core of your firm. Check out the link in the video description to register for the conference. Come hang out with me and spam hair product announcement win in the chat during my talk. Okay, time saver time, especially for you folks in accounting firms, is before you finish this little research project, buddy, have it generate a work paper for you. Here's the format I generally use. Generate a work paper for me summarizing my research in the following format. A summary of your answer to the original question using the excerpts from the source material. Primary excerpts, list out the most relevant quotes with a citation at the end of each. Secondary excerpts and exceptions. Now, really nice thing about GPT-4, it's got a killer plugin for creating actual Word documents. So I'm gonna say build this all into a Word document. Okay, drum roll please. I hope this doesn't suck. That'd be a bummer if this sucked. Boom, sick work paper, bro. This is actually a killer chat GPT plugin. And I recently shared my 11 favorite plugins. That's a fun bit, I'll put it over here. If you're still getting started with this AI stuff, here's my beginner to noob playlist for all things AI to get your whole team up to speed. Mm-hmm, it's happening. The robots are coming. 